This slide presents the overview of the chapter. Learning Objectives By the end of this chapter, you will be able to Understand the importance of nutrition Classify the modes of nutrition Explain autotrophic nutrition Describe the process of photosynthesis in plants Explain the exchange of gases through stomata Mention the materials that are essential for the process of photosynthesis Demonstrate the necessity of carbon dioxide for photosynthesis by conducting an experiment. Explain the role of light in photosynthesis. Illustrate the production of oxygen during photosynthesis in the presence of sunlight. Demonstrate the uses of sunlight in the formation of starch. Interpret chlorophyll and photosynthesis. Illustrate the mechanism of photosynthesis. Interpret heterotrophic nutrition. Explain how organisms obtain the nutrition. Explain parasitic nutrition in cascuta. Describe the nutrition in human beings. Illustrate the steps in passage of food through elementary canal. Sketch the flowchart of human digestive system. Explain food deficiency diseases, diseases due to malnutrition. Explain vitamin deficiency diseases. Before entering into the chapter, follow the instructions shown on the screen. Click each tab to know more. In lower classes, we learned that energy is needed to do all the activities such as breathing, working, walking, etc. Even if we are not doing any activity, the energy is still needed to maintain the working of our body. This energy comes from the food which we eat. Can you answer these questions? Do you know how animals and plants obtain their nutrition? What are autotrophs? What are heterotrophs? What are saprophytes? How can our body perform different functions? Let us try to answer these questions and learn more about nutrition. The process of intake of food, its digestion and distribution to different parts of the body is termed as nutrition. In simple words, nutrition is the process of acquiring energy and materials for growth. Some substances like carbohydrates, proteins, fats, minerals, etc. present in the food that support the growth of organisms and provide raw materials for the biosynthesis of the body constituents are called nutrients. Generally, nutrients are classified into three groups namely Energy yielding carbohydrates and fats Bodybuilding proteins Growth regulating or protective. Organisms need food for various purposes such as to grow and get energy to perform various life activities, repair the damaged cells and tissues, 
produce enzymes and hormones which are essential to carry out and maintain proper life activities and develop resistance against diseases. Now, let us learn about the classification of different types of nutrition found in organisms. The classification of nutrition is shown on the screen. Hover the mouse over the tabs to know more about their process. Now, let us learn about modes of nutrition. Generally, organisms differ each other in their modes of deriving nutrients from the environment. Based on the mode of obtaining food, organisms are classified into two types. They are autotrophs, heterotrophs. Hence, there are mainly two modes of nutrition. They are autotrophic nutrition, heterotrophic nutrition. To begin with, let us learn about the requirement of nutrition in plants. The process by which green plants can make their own food glucose from simple substances like carbon dioxide, water from the soil, sunlight and minerals which are present in the surroundings is called autotrophic mode of nutrition. Organisms using this mode of nutrition are called autotrophs. Autotrophs produce large compounds like carbohydrates, proteins and lipids etc. These carbohydrates produced by plants are used for providing energy in most of the living organisms, including all animals and human beings. Everything we eat comes from the plants either directly or indirectly. After many centuries of research, scientists have discovered that the process of photosynthesis makes plants the universal food provider for all living organisms. Van Helmont and other scientists have concluded that plants not only get food materials from the soil but also from other factors during photosynthesis. Let us learn about this process further. Photosynthesis is the process by which plants prepare their own food. It occurs in the leaves of a plant. Every green plant contains a green pigment called chlorophyll, which develops complex organic molecules from simple compound in the presence of sunlight. C.B. Van Neel formulated a simple equation on photosynthesis in the year 1931. His idea was for each molecule of carbohydrate formed, one molecule of water and one molecule of oxygen is also produced. The simplified equation for photosynthesis is shown on the screen. Plants are capable of synthesizing carbohydrates and all other compounds like proteins, fats, etc. Animals depend on plants for food such as carbohydrates because they are not capable of synthesizing carbohydrates on their own. Let us now observe what actually takes place during the process of photosynthesis. Following are the steps that occur during the process of photosynthesis. Chlorophyll absorbs light energy from sun. Conversion of light energy into chemical energy and splitting of water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen ions by light energy. Reduction of carbon dioxide by hydrogen to form carbohydrates like glucose. Let us observe how each of the term in photosynthesis reaction is useful for photosynthesis. If we carefully observe the cross section of leaf under microscope, we will find some cells with green dots. These green dots are cell organelles and are termed as chloroplasts. Chloroplasts contain chlorophyll.
Here, let us perform an activity to check the presence of starch in leaves. Click each tab to know more. Let us take a soft thin leaf from a potted plant. Boil the leaf in water for 5 minutes to soften it. Place the leaf in a test tube containing alcohol. Take a test tube with methylated spirit and place the leaf in it. Now, place the test tube in a beaker containing water. Gently heat the test tube in a beaker containing water until the leaf becomes pale white. Note, this happens because the chlorophyll gets removed from the leaf. Now, observe the leaf and wash it with water. Next, place the leaf on a petri dish. Add few drops of iodine solution to it and observe the changes in the leaf. It is observed that the parts of the leaf turns into blue-black color, indicating the presence of starch. From this activity, we learn that starch is present in the leaves even in the absence of chlorophyll. Now, let us learn how do plants acquire carbon dioxide. In leaves, there are large number of tiny pores called stomata, which are present on either the upper or lower surface of the leaves of plant. Stomata facilitates the exchange of gases between the leaf and the atmosphere for the purpose of photosynthesis. Each stomatal pore is surrounded by a pair of guard cells. The opening and closing of the pore is controlled by guard cells. When water flows into the guard cells, they expand, become curved and cause the stomatal pore to open. Similarly, the stomatal pore closes when the guard cells lose water, become shrink. Knowledge Check Attempt the following questions to check your understanding. What are the materials that you think are necessary for the synthesis of carbohydrates in the process of photosynthesis? To perform the process of photosynthesis, plants require carbon dioxide, water, minerals, light energy and chlorophyll. Other materials such as nitrogen, phosphorus, iron and magnesium are taken from the soil. Nitrogen an important element is used in the synthesis of proteins and other compounds. It moves into the plants in the form of inorganic nitrates or nitrites. Do you think that the equation of photosynthesis tells about all the materials involved? After doing research for over 300 years, scientists have discovered that several other materials are involved in the process of photosynthesis apart from water, air, sunlight, carbon dioxide and minerals. Let us learn about the role of these materials in the process of photosynthesis.
Von Helmont found that water was necessary for the growth of any plant. Water used in the process of photosynthesis is absorbed from the soil by the roots of plants. Also the minerals like nitrogen, phosphorus, magnesium and iron are absorbed from soil. In class 7 we have already studied this fact by conducting the experiments. Once again read the chapter on nutrition in plants in class 7 and understand how he concluded that water was necessary for the growth in the body mass of any plant. Now, let us learn about the role of air in the process of photosynthesis. Joseph Priestley, who discovered oxygen in 1774, performed a series of experiments to reveal the essential role of air in the growth of green plants. He observed that when a burning candle is enclosed in a bell jar, the flame of the candle is gradually put off. In the same way, a mouse also suffocates in a closed space, such as in an enclosed bell jar and dies. From these observations, Priestley concluded that a burning candle and an animal change the composition of the air. He reasoned that something was necessary in the air to keep the flame burning and to make the mouse stay alive. Priestley then placed a mint plant inside the same bell jars and he found that the mouse stayed alive and the candle when lighted from outside continued burning in the presence of the mint plant. Priestley hypothesized that the plants produced a gas, oxygen, that supported the burning of the candle and also allowed the mouse to survive respiration. The production of the gas takes place due to a massive exchange of gases occurring through a particular section of the leaves called stomata and also through loose tissues on stems, roots, etc. Let us discuss in brief about how carbon dioxide is useful for photosynthesis. Here, let us perform an activity to learn about the necessity of carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. Click each tab to know more. In order to start the experiment, we need a destarched plant. For this reason, place a plant in the dark for three days in order to free the leaves from the starch. Remember the process of destarching the leaves as performed in activity 1. Presence of starch in leaves. Insert a splitted cork in the mouth of the bottle. Place half of the leaf of destarched plant into the bottle having potassium hydroxide pellets or potassium hydroxide solution. Leave the plant under sunlight for few hours. After this, test the part of the leaf inside the bottle with the part of the leaf exposed to sunlight by pouring iodine solution on it. Observe the changes in the leaf. It was observed that half of the leaf was exposed to the sunlight. Atmospheric air becomes bluish black and the leaf which was present inside the bottle containing potassium hydroxide does not become bluish black because potassium hydroxide absorbs the carbon dioxide present in the bottle. This indicates that carbon dioxide is necessary for the process of photosynthesis.
From this experiment, it is clear that carbon dioxide is essential for photosynthesis. Knowledge Check Attempt the following questions to check your understanding. During Priestley's time, scientists did not understand about energy. But in the following years, our understanding on energy increased. It was learnt that by combining oxygen with carbon and hydrogen atoms, carbon dioxide and water are produced. Scientists then tried to understand the role of oxygen in photosynthesis by learning about the process of its formation and replenishment in air. Initially, they learned that energy situation can also reverse. Later, a Dutch scientist, Jan Ingenhuis, studied the way in which plants formed oxygen. In 1779, he observed that the formation of oxygen occurs only in the presence of light. In an experiment with the aquatic plant Hydrilla, he noticed that in bright sunlight, Small bubbles are formed around the green parts, while no bubbles were formed in the dark. He also discovered that the gas present inside the bubbles was oxygen. In the early 20th century, Engelmann inventively identified the point of maximum photosynthesis by exposing a strand of algae to different colors of light, the colors that are present in a rainbow. He used oxygen-sensitive bacteria and discovered certain crowded areas which illuminated under red and blue lights. This directs to study more on light and photosynthesis and the role of different colored compounds called plant pigments and the use of light. Now, let us do an activity to learn about the production of oxygen during photosynthesis in the presence of sunlight. Here, let us perform an activity to understand how oxygen is produced during photosynthesis in the presence of sunlight. Click each tab to know more. Consider the apparatus shown in the image. Take a beaker and fill it with pond water. Place water plant like Hydrilla or Elodie inside the beaker and cover it by a short stemmed funnel. Take a test tube and invert it over the stem of the funnel. Ensure that the level of water in the beaker must be above the level of the end of inverted funnel. Place the entire assembly of apparatus in the sunlight for at least three days. It is observed that in place of water, air is filled in it. This air is actually a gas and is collected in the test tube. Test the gas collected in the test tube by inserting a glowing incense stick, which would burst into flames. This indicates the presence of oxygen. The air bubbles formed in the test tube is of oxygen gas. Thus, it is clear from this activity that oxygen is produced during the process of photosynthesis in the presence of sunlight. Here, let us perform an activity to learn about the need of sunlight in the formation of starch. Click each tab to know more. Take a plant having these starched leaves, that is a plant which is placed in the dark for three days. 
Remember the process of distorching the leaves as performed in activity 1. Presence of starch in leaves. Wrap one of its leaves with black paper on which a design is cut. Fix the black paper on the leaf with the help of clips such that light should not enter the dark part. Now, place this plant in the sunlight for few hours. Later, test the leaf that is covered by black pepper for the presence of starch by pouring iodine solution on the leaf. Observe the changes in the leaf. It is observed that only the parts of the leaf which are exposed to the light through cut out design turn to blue black indicating the presence of starch. From the experiment, we learned that starch is formed only at the parts where sunlight falls. In this way, it is clear that sunlight is compulsory for the formation of starch. Knowledge Check Attempt the following questions to check your understanding. Ingen House researched more about photosynthesis. He proposed that only the green colored parts of the plant could carry the process of photosynthesis. Some questions were raised regarding this statement such as, what about the plants having colors other than green? How do the new leaves which are in red color turn into green? Do the plants that have reddish or yellowish leaves also carry photosynthesis? Why is it that only green colored plants carry out photosynthesis and why not green colored animals like birds could not carry out photosynthesis? These questions remained unanswered until the scientists studied about the green colored substance of plant parts. Ingen House proposition came into formation after several experiments. Other scientists have also located the site of photosynthesis and they even detached it. In the year 1817, two scientists named Pelletier and Cavento extracted a green colored substance from the leaves and it was termed as chlorophyll. It was also found that the other pigments present in the plants also help in the process of photosynthesis by passing the energy of sunlight trapped by them to chlorophyll. Let us learn about the location of photosynthesis in a leaf. List a few places where you think photosynthesis occur in plants. Drag and drop each pin onto the leaf where you think photosynthesis occur.
the correct location of the photosynthetic part, part containing chlorophyll, was not known till another 60 decades after Pelletier and Cavento found chlorophyll. It was believed that the photosynthesis was distributed in the cells of green plant parts. But in 1883, Julius van Sachs found that chlorophyll present in plant cells is observed only in organelles within the cell but not through the entire cell. These organelles were termed as chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are present in large numbers in the cells. That is around 40 to 100 of parts such as the stomata, gourd cells and ground tissues of plants. In ninth class we already learnt about the chloroplast. The transfer sections of leaf and chloroplast are shown on screen. Now, let us learn how photosynthesis takes place in the chloroplast. Drag and drop puzzle. From the image on screen, identify the parts of the transfer section of leaf. The first one is done for you. Knowledge Check Attempt the following questions to check your understanding. The process of photosynthesis takes place in two major phases. They are light reaction, dark reaction. In light reaction, light plays an important role. Here, a series of chemical reactions takes place one after another initiated by light. Hence, this phase is technically termed as photochemical phase. The reactions of the light take place in thylakoid membrane which is present in chlorophyll. Thylakoids are termed as grana of chloroplasts. Following are the steps involved in light reaction. Step 1. When sunlight falls on the plant, the chlorophyll present on the leaf absorbs light energy and becomes activated. The absorbed energy excites electrons to the higher energy level. Step 2. This energy is used to split the water molecule into two component ions. It is given by the equation shown on the screen. The above reaction is termed as photolysis, which means splitting by using light, that is photo, light, lysis, breaking. Step 3. The highly reactive ions of water split in two different directions as hydroxyl and hydrogen ions. The hydroxyl ions through a series of steps produce water and oxygen. The water produced may be used inside the plant and the gas oxygen is released into the atmosphere. The hydrogen ions undergo series of changes in dark reaction. Adenosine triphosphate ATP and nicotinamide adenosine dinucleotide hydrogen phosphate NADPH are produced at the end of the light reaction. These are called as assimilatory powers. These ATP and NADPH are used in sugar making process. Let us learn about dark reaction. The term dark reaction does not imply that this reaction occurs only in the dark or during the night. This reaction indicates that it do not require light energy. However, it occurs simultaneously 
with the light reaction. Hydrogen ions produced in photolysis are instantly picked up by a special compound NADP to form NADPH. During the dark phase reaction, the hydrogen of the NADPH combines with the carbon dioxide with the help of ATP energy in order to produce glucose. This reaction occurs in a number of steps by using some special intermediate compounds mainly RUBP, ribulose, biphosphate and enzymes. Finally, the obtained glucose is converted into starch. During the process of photosynthesis, several proceedings occur in the chloroplast. Some of them are converting light energy into chemical energy, splitting of water molecule, reduction of carbon dioxide to carbohydrates. Once light energy has been captured, it can help the dark reactions to initiate several events, even in the dark, and some may continue even in the absence of light. Light dependent events or reactions are called light reactions and they take place in grana while the rest are called dark reactions and they occur in the stroma. Plants have the capacity to work under any situations such as from very lighted hot dry conditions to wet, humid dim light conditions. The requirement of light and other factors change from one plant to another. Let us now look into the concept map of photosynthesis. Knowledge Check Attempt the following questions to check your understanding. After learning about nutrition in plants, let us learn about the same in animals. It is called heterotrophic nutrition. Each organism is habituated to live in its own environment. The form of nutrition taken by the animal varies based on the type and availability of food materials and also how it is obtained by the organism. For example, if the food source is static, such as grass, or movable such as a deer. There is a difference in how the food is accessed and how the parts of body are involved in obtaining the food by a cow and a lion. Different organisms have different strategies for consuming the food. Few organisms break down the food material outside the body and then digest it. Examples, bread molds, yeast, mushrooms, etc. Some other organisms like amoeba take in whole food material inside their bodies and then break down into small pieces. This depends upon the digestive system of each organism. Some other organisms like cuscuta, lice, leeches and tapeworms take the nutrition from plants and animals without killing them. Let us learn how organisms obtain their nutrition.
the digestive system is different in different organisms. For example, in a single-celled organisms like amoeba, the food may be consumed from the entire surface, but as the size of the organism increases, the pots become specialized and perform different functions. The nutrition in amoeba is shown on screen. The amoeba takes in food by using pseudopodia as shown in image. This pseudopodia looks like temporary finger extensions of the cell surface which fuses over the food particle forming food vacuole. Inside the food vacuole, the complex substances of food particles are crushed down with the help of enzymes into simpler ones and then diffuse into the cytoplasm. The undigested food particles are moved down to the surface of the cell and are thrown out. In other unicellular organisms like paramecium, the cell has a definite shape and the food is taken in from a particular place and this food is moved to the place by the movement of cilia that covers the entire surface of the cell where the food gets swallowed. Let us learn in detail about parasitic nutrition in Cascuta. A particular species in Cascuta is Dodder. It does not contain any leaves. It is a twining, parasitic plant that belongs to Morning Splendor family. These species generally contain 170 twining species and are broadly distributed throughout the moderate and tropical regions of the world. The Dodder species does not contain chlorophyll. It absorbs food through hostoria, which are root-like organs that penetrate towards the tissue of a host plant and even may kill it. But it has been found that Cascuta reflexa contains a very small amount of chlorophyll. The thin, string-like stems of the daughter may be of different colors like yellow, orange, pink or brown. The daughter's flowers are of tiny yellow or white bell-like lobed corollas, united petals. Let us now learn about the formation of dodder. The dodder seed grows slowly and forms an anchoring root and grows in a spiral fashion and reaches a host plant. It then waves around the stem of the host plant and throws out hostoria, which diffuses it. The water for the species is drawn through the hostoria of the corresponding host plant stem and xylem and the nutrients are drawn from its phloem. In the meantime, the root decays after stem contact has been made with a host plant. As the daughter grows on, it sends out new hostoria and sets strongly on the host plant. Suppose, after growing a few spirals, if the host decays, then the daughter finds another way and continues to wave and branch until it looks like or becomes a fine, densely tangled web of thin stems enveloping the host plant. Knowledge Check Attempt the following questions to check your understanding. Now, let us learn about nutrition in human beings. When compared to the digestive system of other organisms, human digestive system is very complex where different parts perform different functions by using various digestive juices and enzymes. Image on the screen shows the elementary canal of man. The elementary canal is a long tube extending from the mouth to the anus as indicated in the image. This tube has various regions which perform different functions. Generally, every one of us get doubt about what happens to the food once it enters into our body and how it gets digested in the elementary canal. 
let us learn more usually everything we eat passes through the same digestive area the process of taking food into the body is called ingestion naturally the food has to be processed to generate simpler particles from the complex substances because the particles must be small enough to be picked up by our body the texture also needs to be easily absorbed let us discuss in detail about the steps involved in the passage of food through alimentary canal or gut the food we eat is chewed by our teeth in the mouth this chewed food is mixed with saliva to make it wet and slippery the saliva is produced by three pairs of salivary glands that are situated at the side of the jaw and below the tongue the tongue helps in mixing the food and forwarding it to the next part and the lower jaw also helps in the whole process these parts help in the smooth passage of food through our alimentary canal to the stomach saliva contains an enzyme amylase named as ptyalin which helps to break down the complex substances of food into simpler ones so that they can be used by the body with the help of enzymes this process is termed as digestion drag and drop puzzle from the image on screen identify the parts of the digestive system from mouth to anus the first one is done for you knowledge check attempt the following questions to check your understanding here Let us perform an activity where the acidic and basic nature of food materials are tested using litmus paper. Click each tab to know more. Take two litmus papers, one red and the other blue. Touch the two litmus papers one by one to your tongue before taking food into the mouth. observe whether the litmus papers change the color it is observed that the color of the two litmus papers remain unchanged now let us do an activity to learn about the nature of our saliva after chewing the food repeat the same test after chewing the food orange and swallowing it Now observe the change in color of the two litmus papers. It is observed that the color of blue litmus paper turns into red. and the color of the red litmus paper remains unchanged generally in neutral state color of blue litmus and red litmus paper remains unchanged in acidic state 
color of blue litmus paper changes into red and red litmus paper remains unchanged. In base state, color of blue litmus paper remains unchanged and red litmus paper turns into blue. Thus, from this experiment, we have understood that before chewing the food, neither the red litmus nor the blue litmus paper has changed the colors. This is because our tongue is slightly alkaline in nature, neutral. After chewing the acidic food orange, then the color of blue litmus paper turned into red and red litmus paper remained unchanged. After chewing the base food say tomatoes, the color of blue litmus remains unchanged and the color of red litmus paper turns into blue. Now, let us perform an activity on action of saliva on starch and iodine solutions. Here, let us perform an activity to observe the action of saliva on starch and iodine solutions. Click each tab to know more. Take two test tubes A and B. Add 1 ml of starch solution, 1% to both the test tubes. Next, Add 1 ml of saliva to test tube A and leave the other test tube B without adding anything. Keep the two test tubes aside for 20 to 30 minutes. Now add few drops of dilute iodine solution to both the test tubes A and B. Observe the changes. It is observed that test tube A with saliva has no change in color. Only pale yellow color of iodine is observed. Test tube B with starch solution and iodine turns into purple color. From this experiment, we learn that when saliva is added to the iodine and starch solution, the enzyme amylase breakdowns starch in saliva to begin digestion and the solution becomes clear, while the solution that has no saliva remains in purple color. Let us now learn about the movement of food from esophagus to stomach. It is technically called peristaltic movement. The soft food that is mixed with saliva passes through esophagus or food pipe to the stomach by a wave-like movement called peristaltic movement. In the stomach, the food gets mixed with gastric juice and HCL which is in a semi-solid condition. The digestion of food goes on as most proteins are broken down into smaller molecules with the help of enzyme pepsin acting on them. Chyme is the process in which the proteins and carbohydrates of the soft slimy substance of food are broken down. The food now passes from the stomach to the small intestine which contains ring-like muscles, called as sphincters. These sphincters are responsible for opening the valve so that an only small quantity of the food material enters into the small intestine at a time. Let us learn about the small intestine. The small intestine is the longest part of the alimentary canal. Here, the complete digestion of carbohydrates, proteins and fats takes place. Small intestine receives the secretion of liver and pancreas for the purpose of digestion. 
the process of digesting the fats by converting them into small bubble like substances with the help of the bile juice that is secreted from liver is called emulsification proteins and lipases for fats are digested with the help of enzymes like trypsin present in pancreatic juice walls of the small intestine secrete intestinal juice which helps in breaking down of small molecules of proteins into further smaller molecules the same process is repeated for fats the process of digestion of carbohydrate starts in the mouth it resumes in the stomach when the food is converted into an alkaline form here the enzymes responsible for the breakdown of carbohydrates become active The table on the screen gives information about different enzymes, digestive juices and its functions. Knowledge check. Attempt the following questions to check your understanding. Let us learn the function of villi in digestive system. The process of transporting the digestion of products from the intestine into blood through the wall of intestine is called absorption. Internally, the intestinal wall contains a number of fingers-like projections called as villi. The villi increases the surface area for absorption. Blood vessels and lymph vessels are present inside the villi in the form of a network. The digestion of products are first absorbed by the villi and then passes into the blood vessels and lymph vessels. With the help of small intestine, the maximum amount of digested food is sent to various parts of the body through blood. Remaining amount of the food material passes to the large intestine. Large intestine reabsorbs maximum amount of water from the remaining food material. This material is then passed through the anus which is the last part of the alimentary canal. The process of passing of undigested material from the body through the anus is called defecation. Food that comes out from the anus still contains significant amounts of proteins, fats and carbohydrates. Roughages or fibers of either carbohydrates or proteins. Knowledge check. Attempt the following questions to check your understanding. The flowchart of human digestive system is shown on the screen. Excess or improper intake of food cause health issues with the alimentary canal. Let us learn about all such aspects associated with the alimentary canal. This slide presents the information about the dental caries and its symptoms and preventive measures. The human alimentary canal exhibits good functionality. so we have some indigestible food like junk food etc but at times the alimentary canal cannot take some food as a result of which we either feel sick or have indigestion the human body gets rid of the unwanted and harmful substances present in the stomach through vomiting when the peristaltic movements of the stomach and esophagus occur in reverse direction it results in expulsion of the food Among all the causes of vomiting the most common cause is overeating 
especially the food which has high proportion of fat vomiting also occurs when very indigestible and poisonous food is consumed bilious or liverish feeling is often due to consumption of rich meals over several days liver cannot cope to digest the food which is rich in fats as a result we suffer from feeling of nausea and headache sometimes indigestion is a general term used when there is difficulty in digesting food healthy people do not suffer from indigestion if they follow below mentioned diet having simple and well balanced food eating them in a leisurely manner chewing the food thoroughly avoiding strenuous exercises soon after having food drinking plenty of water and having regular bowel movements humans should learn a lot from the animals which have a good sleep after having food indigestion caused by stomach and duodenal ulcers is very severe this problem is often observed in people who are worried and hurried so ulcers are mostly observed in people habituated to have hurried meals and rush from one work to other and don't have proper sleep example doctors schoolmasters members of parliament stock brokers and business executives the people who maintain a proper diet have good sleep and don't tense a lot seldom get ulcers in order to stay healthy the bowels ought to be emptied regularly if the residues of food are present in the colon for much longer time the bacteria get sufficient time to produce harmful substances which might be absorbed by blood and cause diseases like cancer etc having plenty of roughage fiber in the diet helps a lot in avoiding constipation food deficiency diseases food is the main source in order to maintain the biological processes in a perfect manner to protect our body from food deficiency diseases proper diet should be taken that is the balanced food which contains proper amount of carbohydrates proteins vitamins mineral salts and fats two third of the world's population is mainly affected by the food related diseases most of them are facing various types of diseases due to the lack of balanced diet and some of them are suffering by taking high calorific food if the food which we intake do not contain required amount of nutrients then it is called as malnutrition the reasons for malnutrition in our country are mainly due to poor health willful starvation lack of awareness of nutritional habits socio economic factors malnutrition is of three types they are calorie malnutrition protein malnutrition protein calorie malnutrition the harmful effects of malnutrition caused in children are kwashiorkor disease occurs due to deficiency of proteins in diet symptoms body becomes swollen due to the shortage of water in the intercellular spaces poor development of muscle swollen legs fluffy face difficult to eat diarrhea dry skin marasmus occurs due to deficiency of both proteins and calories and also when there is an immediate second pregnancy or repeated childbirths symptoms lean and weak swelling limbs less developed muscles dry skin diarrhea etc obesity occurs due to overeating and excess of energy intake it is a big health hazard symptoms an obese child when grows suffer from diseases like diabetes cardiovascular renal and gall bladder knowledge check attempt the following questions to check your understanding
Vitamin deficiency diseases. Vitamins are organic substances that are required in small quantities. Actually, vitamins are not synthesized in the body. Generally, we do not suffer from vitamin deficiency because our body contains two sources of vitamins. One is diet and the other is bacteria present in the intestine that synthesize and supply the vitamins. Vitamins are categorized into two groups. They are water-soluble vitamins, B-complex, vitamin C, fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin A, D, E and K. Let us study the vitamin available sources and deficiency diseases. The vitamin available sources and deficiency diseases are Click each tab to know more. Water soluble vitamin deficiency diseases. Fat soluble vitamin deficiency diseases. Knowledge check. Attempt the following questions to check your understanding. Match the following. Note. Select suitable answer from group B for group A and drop it in bracket provided against A. Keywords. List of keywords are given on screen. Let us recap the highlights of this chapter. The process by which green plants can make their own food, glucose, from simple substances like carbon dioxide, water from the soil, and minerals which are present in the surroundings is called autotrophic mode of nutrition. Photosynthesis is the process by which plants prepare their own food. C.B. Van Neel formulated a simple equation on photosynthesis in the year 1931. Stomata facilitate the exchange of gases between the leaf and the atmosphere for the purpose of photosynthesis. Each stomatal pore is surrounded by a pair of cord cells. The opening and closing of the pore is controlled by cord cells. Von Helmont found that water was necessary for the growth of any plant. In the year 1817, two scientists named Pelletier and Cavento extracted a green-colored substance from the leaves and it is termed as chlorophyll which represents green leaf. In 1883, Julius von Sachs found that chlorophyll present in plant cells is observed only in organelles within the cell but not through the entire cell. These organelles were termed as chloroplasts. Light reaction and dark reaction are two major phases found in photosynthesis. The digestive system is different in different organisms. Dodder is a species of cascuta it does not contain any leaves. It is a twining, parasitic plant that belongs to morning splendor family. The daughter species do not contain chlorophyll. It absorbs food through hosturia. When compared to the digestive system of other organisms, human digestive system is very complex where different parts perform different functions by using various digestive juices and enzymes. 
the food which we eat is chewed by our teeth in the mouth this chewed food is mixed with saliva to make it wet and slippery and finally passes to stomach saliva contains an enzyme amylase named as ptyalin which helps to break down the complex substances of food into simpler ones so that they can be used by the body with the help of enzymes this process is termed as digestion the small intestine is the longest part of the alimentary canal here the complete digestion of carbohydrates proteins and fats takes place it receives the secretion of liver and pancreas for the purpose of digestion in human beings the food eaten is broken down into various steps with the help of enzymes secreted by digestive glands which are associated with the alimentary canal and the digested food is absorbed in small intestine to send to all cells in the body the digestive system includes the alimentary tract and several associated organs the functions of system are ingestion taking of food into the body it is also termed as swallowing digestion breaking up of complex food substances into the simple substances so that they can be used by the body which will be carried out by specific enzymes absorption the passes of digested food through the walls of alimentary tract particulars in small intestine into circulatory system defecation the process of passing of undigested material from the body through the anus read the questions and attempt the answers on your own you can click answer for your reference drawing skills the drawing section helps you to sketch images in a step by step manner click each tab to know more
follow up work take up the following activities write a note on von helmont's experiments focusing on how he concluded that water was necessary for the growth of any plant collect different types of food materials prepared by various plants in your surroundings prepare an album by collecting images relating to food deficiency diseases from magazines newspapers internet etc consult a doctor and collect information to overcome vitamin deficiency diseases test your understanding of the chapter by taking the mock unit test You have successfully completed the chapter Nutrition.